Uh, the East Royal Top did its first Winter Spectacular in quite a while, since 2011 or even earlier than that, actually, since the, since the early 2000s. Uh, nothing was under steam, but we had them 12 out, and through the magic of smoke bombs, we did this night shot here of the 12. Um, went over to the trolley museum uh, after that, and they put the three orange cars together. You got a York car on the left, and then uh, two Johnstown cars. And here there are the two Johnstown cars at the uh, the brick platform at the museum. Next day, the East Park Top was running um, trips with the M1 Doodle Bar um, up to Colgate Grove. Recently, we get reopened after. Uh, 11 years of not being in service. Say, uh, is that going towards the Pennsylvania River or anything like Yes, it is. It's heading north. Uh, hopefully, the uh, new owners will pres preserve that sign there on the left. That's like, like the throwback to the 1960s and the original, original tourist railroad. Okay. Here's the doodle bug um, going through the Alba Valley uh, at the Rump Road Fill. The museum, Charlie Museum was running the Liberty Line here across the street, so went out and shot that. Then on the way home, I stopped at um, Fort Letter County. There's, there's an industrial railroad that works there now. Um, and we did a, a night photos of some of their locomotives. This is not far from Chambersburg. Now we're in Cumberland, Maryland. Um, here we see another one of Amtrak's anniversary engines in the uh, Pepsi can scheme, leading the eastbound Capital Limited into Cumberland. The reason I was there was because the Western Maryland Scenic was running a special train for uh, McHugh Locomotive and Equipment. Uh, J.C. McHugh and his company have done a lot of work for the Western Maryland Scenic as part of the compensation package that uh, J.C. got. They uh, Gave him his own weekend with special trains. Uh, here you see is the, the Q Steam Special going past the Mountain View Station, which is a former Ridgely bus shelter. Uh, the next day, I was, had the, a photo charter down on the uh, Northern Central Railroad. They have one of these um, newly built 1860s 440s. This runs out of New Freedom, Pennsylvania. For the photo charters, we uh, we like our smoke for the photos, but um, I'm guessing that we probably put out more smoke on one charter than all the engines in the Civil War did combined, <laughs> since they're all wood burners. This is Howard Tunnel. This is, this is, what, this is the oldest uh, in-service tunnel in the United States, and just recently uh, reopened again by the Northern Central. Dates back to the late 1830s. No, it, it burns oil. It burns oil. Not this charter here, but the previous charter. Um, last one by the day, I asked for a lot of smoke, and boy, uh, it was like like a volcano going off. Not exactly authentic. Uh, we're in Fern Rock. This is uh, up at the Broad Street Subway shop in Fern Rock. Um, I was working on my um, my Philadelphia book, trying to get it wrapped up into the printer. And I realized I hadn't really shot anything on the Broad Street subway in like 20 years. I had some old stuff, but nothing, nothing really current. Um, so I went to Fern Rock, just did a few photos to, to get, get some current stuff into the book. And here's um, a set of regional rail train on the X Reading going for the Fern Rock station. Uh, the subway station would be just off to the left here. I had to, didn't have to, but I had to to uh, Illinois for the uh, conference for the uh, Center of Railroad Photography and Art out in Lake Forest, Illinois, in the northern part of Chicago land, and ventured up into, up into um, Wisconsin, on the old Wisconsin Central, which is now part of Canadian National. And this is at, at Lomira, Wisconsin. And here we have Canadian National's 
uh, Illinois Central Heritage Unit leading the train uh, after dark. Once again, back in this for digital photography. Also out there, serving as the helpers out of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, are these two uh, ex Bessemer and Lake Erie tunnel motors. Uh, a little far from home, but of course, uh, Bessemer and Lake Erie is also now part of Canadian National. Uh, these were the helpers for uh, Byron Hill. Uh, this is in Allentown, not Allentown, Pennsylvania, but Allentown, Wisconsin. And this is in Sturdivant, Wisconsin. This is the um, Ohio Office Service line between uh, Chicago and Milwaukee. Here we see one of the Ohio Office Service uh, trains behind one of the Amtrak's new locomotives. Uh, this is at the site of the old Sturdivant station. If you look carefully in the back behind the signal on the left, that, that brick tower, that's the new Sturdivant station. And this is uh, coming out of downtown Milwaukee. That's the Milwaukee skyline in the background. And here's the Empire Builder coming into Milwaukee from Chicago. Uh, also in Milwaukee, I, I found this uh, neat shop, this bridge, and the Iron Horse Hotel in the background. And out by the uh, Miller Brewery, um, it was rumored way back when, when Coors first bought Miller, that uh, Coors is going to take the, uh, the Miller bow tie off the top of the brewery. Here we are all these years later, and the, uh, the Miller bow tie is still there. In fact, you'll find very few references to Coors at all uh, around the, the Miller Brewery. And I guess that's been bought again by somebody else at this point. Uh, we're on the Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin and Southern here. Pretty cool railroad. I've always had trouble finding it out running. Uh, not this way, but did catch this train here uh, coming up out of Milwaukee. And we are in um, Ackerville, Wisconsin. River Wisconsin and Southern interchanges with Canadian National. Speaking of Canadian National, here it is again coming on, on Byron Hill out of Fond du Lac. This is at uh, Teresa Station, Wisconsin. And then on the way home from there, uh, I stopped in New Buffalo, Michigan. We got um, the CSX freight coming underneath uh, an old uh, Chesapeake in Ohio Clinton Tower. There's two lines in New Buffalo. The other line is the ex Michigan Central, and Amtrak, you actually Amtrak uses both lines. Michigan Central is a little bit busier for Amtrak. Uh, here we see a train just out of the New Buffalo station in Port Chicago or toward um, Grand Rapids or somewhere uh, with Lake Michigan in the background. And uh, we're in South Bend, Indiana here. This is an Amtrak train on the old Michigan Central crossing over the Chicago South Shore and South Bend. Uh, this part of the uh, South Shore is in the process of being double tracked. Still heading back east, we're in Rolling Prairie, Indiana, this Norfolk Southern Freight. Now, as an Elkhart, Indiana, and caught the um, Norfolk Southern Research Train, uh, quite by accident. Uh, it consists of a random locomotive on the front. Uh, then in the middle there is what NS actually calls the brick, uh, a former SD40 that's been repurposed. Uh, as a geometry a vehicle and provides power to the research car on the rear of the train. And the Monongahela Heritage Unit coming out of Elkhart. Uh, all those signals up there are for the uh, entrance to uh, Elkhart Yard. Back local again, we're in Radnor here on SEPTA, Silver Liner 5, heading towards the city. And the Silver Liner 4, this is in Conshohocken.
and another silver liner for them. This is in Mount Airy. A lot of cool stations out this way. One of the coolest is the Graver Station. Here we see Silver Liner 5 part of Graver's. And this is the um, station at Shawmont. Shawmont, yeah. Boy, I had a brain freeze there. Shawmont, uh, this is probably the oldest building existing in the United States used as a passenger station initially. Uh, it was used as a passenger station as early as the 1830s. Um, there's no other building in the United States that exists that was used as a passenger station earlier than that. The Ellicott City b station is older than this, but it was used as a freight station initially. It wasn't used as a, as a passenger station until the 1850s. So this is the oldest existing passenger station in the U.S. And SEPTA has plans to actually uh, reopen this as a, as a station stop. We're back in Cumberland, actually originally West Virginia, just across the river. Uh, here we see um, Western Maryland Scenic GP30 501 in the surface paint scheme, even though Western Maryland itself never had GP30s, but it looks good still. Uh, going past another one of them uh, <coughs> repurposed bus shelters. Now, this is an evening train up to Frostburg, and I caught it at Homesteaders Curve, but it's, it's, it's well past sunset, and it's, it's pouring rain. And I'm getting soaked. Boy, it was really, really a cool shuttle. Come around Helmstead is curved here. And then from there, uh, oh, here's the going away shot in the same location, the GP30 on the back to uh, bring the train back down the hill again, since they can't turn the steam engine up in Frost Park. And then this is up in Frost Park. This is the train arriving. You can see it's pouring rain. Um, and it's dark, really dark. And I'm, I aim my camera, kind of ISO, you know, ISO 12,800, and kind of aimed it at the engine. And it, the camera saw more than I could. It was pretty impressive, actually. I'm heading out to um, New Haven, Indiana, for a photo session with the Nickel Plate Road uh, 765. And as part of the photo session, they had some models there to pose. Uh, in vintage clothing. And an antique car was brought in. And they did a hooping up water scene. That is not rain in the head like that. That's actually just uh, water coming down from the locomotive. It had been sitting for a while. And then when it went to move it, it, it shot all kinds of stuff out of the stack. And this is up in the cab of the 765. That's Grant Geist, engineer. Uh, he's been around for quite a while in, in preservation. He ran a lot of the old trips along the uh, Ohio Central and they've done steam trips out there. On the way home, I stopped at Youngstown, Youngstown Steel Heritage Museum. Uh, they have this X Jones and Laughlin 040 tank engine that weighs a ton, a million tons. The thing is, is heavy. Uh, it was used for hauling you know, steel cars around the steel mill. Um, so for traction, it, they got loaded up on the weight. But anyhow, the uh, Youngstown uh, Steel Heritage Museum is now uh, has a little bit of trackage and they run the locomotive uh, back and forth. The locomotive never had a tender uh, in the <clears> service, <throat> um, but they had to add one here because the, the line here, you can see it's going uphill or it keeps going uphill. It's a real steep hill. And uh, the engine can get up there just fine, but get it stopped coming back downhill again is a problem. So they had to build the tender and put um, an air tank in it and put air brakes in the locomotive. And even at that, I ran the engine, they didn't run the engine for one trip. Um, when you get to the top of the hill, you just open the throttle a little bit and start going downhill again. And once it comes off the flat part and onto the hill, you close the throttle, set the brake, and just nothing else you can do. It's going to go downhill no matter what you do at that point. Um, they've added more brakes to it since, so they can actually stop it on the hill now if they had to. But you're just along for the ride from downhill. <laughs> uh, back to Pittsburgh again. Um, 
same trip coming home. This is the Pittsburgh Light Rail crossing over the Panhandle Bridge. This bridge was um, uh, used to be for the Pennsylvania Railroad. Uh, it's no longer a heavy rail bridge. Uh, when Conrail no longer, I think it was Conrail, no longer needed it, uh, they turned it over to the uh, Transit Authority. Once again, you got the Panhandle Bridge down low, then one of the highway bridges above it. And this is the uh, Duquesne Incline coming up the hill with the uh, Golden Triangle in the background. Once again, stuff you couldn't do with film. This is an industrial operation um, in um, near uh, near Braddock, Pennsylvania. Not Braddock. Um, what's going to be eventually? Um, anyhow, um, ATI Allegheny Technologies has a steel mill. And it's separated, there's two parts, it's separated by about a mile. And so they run this industrial railroad between the two parts of the mill. And they shuttle trains back and forth all day. Uh, that's North Oak Southern's Connemaw line, just beyond it there. And here you see a train coming out of one part of the mill, heading for the other part of the mill. Uh, we're in Crescent, Pennsylvania. West, uh, eastbound freight, ready to go down to Horseshoe Curve and on into Altoona. And here's a westbound train, also a Crescent from the Grove. That's the station in the white building there in the uh, background, just over the big locomotive. Except to um, retire all of its AEM7s and its one ALP44 uh, a couple of years ago, other than uh, gel train service. And they, they sold them for scrap. So here we see the uh, one, two, three, eight units, eight units heading to the, uh, to the scrapper in Morrisville, Pennsylvania. Did you? Wow. For those in Zoom land, that person just said he delivered, uh, delivered those units way back. One of the coolest projects going on right now is the uh, Pensy uh, T1 project. They're building a brand new Pensy T1 4444 from scratch. And they come a long way with it. Anyhow, um, as part of the Pennsylvania Railroad Technical and Historical Society Convention in Harrisburg this year, they brought the T1's boiler all the way out from the Midwest to the convention. Uh, here we see the, the prowl of the T1, and that's the boy over there. Um, it's coming along at, um, up in the cab is Jason Johnson, who's one of the, the primary people behind the T1 project. And on the ground is um, Daniel Trump, who's the general manager actually of the Northern Central in the um, Civil War that we've done in the treaty. And uh, we're taking the windows out of the engine here to transport back to the Midwest after the event. And here we are at the X-Reading uh, station in Swatara, just uh, on the edge of, of Hershey, Pennsylvania. South Jersey here, Winchester and Western. This is uh, at Vinyl, crossing over the, uh, the Jersey Central. Trains on the XPRSL. Uh, there's always rumors going around that they're going to uh, chop the nose on this SD9 someday. Uh, but they haven't done it for I've been talking about it for years. Uh, where to find a high nose SD9 in service anywhere right now is, is almost impossible. And they have to run engines on both ends because of the way the um, junction is laid out in, in, in vinyl. So here's the uh, SD9 just along for the ride in the back of the train heading back into Bridgeton. The biggest steam news in the East uh, this year is probably the restoration of uh, Reading Northern T1 2102. Here we see it on its first, uh, its first public trip, uh, just uh, south of Port Clinton, coming underneath the X Pensy. 
And here it is blasting up through what is Monroe Junction. This is, if you ever get, get out and see this engine, the place to be is East Monroe Junction. It really puts on a show going through here. Just crawls. And this is in Barnesville. And then there's a three hour layover in Jim Thorpe. Rather than fight the crowds in Jim Thorpe, I went over to Shimoka and there were rain uh, trips on the North Shore Railroad. So I chased the trips out, out of Shimoka. You never see one of the North Shore trips going through uh, Sunnyside, Pennsylvania. And uh, had time also to head over to Ashland and check out the Pioneer Tunnel. And they're they're uh, steam working. And here's the T1 coming back through uh, East Monroe Junction. Not as impressive going this direction here. It's all downhill at this point. Uh, local again. This is um, over Bridgeport, Raccoon Creek, uh, CA11 heading north, crossing over the movable bridge. Congress Barry Bridge, way off in the distance, just below the uh, screen sharing. Uh, there. Back out the Cumberland. Here's uh, 1309 again. I now plan all my moves west to try to coincide with uh, getting out to Cumberland at about 11:30 in the morning. 1309 months. So here you see it ready to go. The Homesteaders Curve, and coming underneath the next Western Maryland Signal Bridge, uh, heading up to Frostburg. This is near Mount Savage. Back in downtown Cumberland, you see a CSX freight led by Union Pacific Power. And then uh, back on the Western Maryland Scenic, um, they ran an ice cream train uh, up to Frostburg. This is the ice cream train actually going away, going back down the hill. Uh, the Western Maryland uh, GP30 going underneath that signal bridge. And this is on the Everett Railroad. They just picked up this three high valley you know, <clears throat> SW. And boy, you need sunglasses to look at it. It's really sharp. This is out of Rolling Spring, Pennsylvania. Really a cool engine. And we're at the um, Pennsylvania Trolley Museum out in, near uh, Washington, PA. Another West Bank cars. And a uh, PCC. My favorites are PCCs, I, I admit it. Another Pittsburgh PCC in an earlier paint scheme with the uh, more recent paint scheme in the background. And night shots. Um, this is actually a work zone. We're putting in a station here and a visitor center and stuff like that. So if you're going to go to a night closed session in the construction zone, we might as well bring in some work trolleys to uh, spice up the scene. So here we have a work trolley in the, in the newly constructed station. And here we have the, um, the wire car and a, a boom car together. Back to the Resting House Bridge. I discovered this is only lit um, through uh, from like like early June to middle of July because it's all shadowed in down here. Otherwise, one of the longest days of summer can get this shot because the uh, Pennsylvania leaves Pittsburgh at seven thirty in the morning. I finally got the shot in sunny weather. I tried it in shelter. I tried a few months earlier and uh, it was all shadowed in. Uh, we're on a tour of the uh, Pat Transit shops in Pittsburgh. Pretty cool tour. Yeah, let's go pretty much everywhere we wanted to. And then another one of the uh, 50th anniversary engines. This is on the uh, westbound Pennsylvania, crossing the Juniana River in Mount Union. Um, the friends of Filthy Trolley's ran a trip during the summer using car number 9000, which had its 40th anniversary actually back in uh, 2020. Uh, but with COVID, we, we couldn't do a proper 40th anniversary trip until now. Here we are in the center city tunnel. 
I mean, once again, we try to find churches and stuff like that to make nice backdrops. Um, we also have special um, destination sign cards with all kinds of crazy things on them. Uh, so we have a Route 62 Yaden card here. Here's um, another one of Amtrak's 50th anniversary engines. This was actually sponsored by a, a, a game company. Uh, but they put one of the AEM7s back into its uh, phase three paint scheme. Pretty cool. This is at Prospect Park. It, uh, excuse me. No, that's, that's part of the new. Uh, no, this is one of the new uh, ACS 64s. Only one aware of this scheme. Um, I had to go to Philly, and the easiest way for me to get to Philly in Center City, anyhow, is to take Patco. So here you are at the 9th and 10th uh, and Locust Station. Train coming into the station, heading for Jersey. Uh, this is the Shenandoah Junction, West Virginia, the Eastbound Capital Limited. And uh, this is, I know, this is for um, my, my um, counterpart over at Trains Magazine, uh, Jim Lynn, passed away earlier this year. So I sent him down to, uh, to his hometown in North Carolina for his funeral. Uh, this is um, the Salt House. This is in uh, Jonesboro, Tennessee. And this is in Johnson City, Tennessee. Uh, the locomotive is the um, is the unit for Norfolk Southern painted in the Interstate Railway paint scheme. And despite the UP power, this is an NS train going through Johnson City. Tennessee. Let's start on the Great Smoky Mountain Railroad out of Willsboro, North Carolina. Uh, they painted their 280 to 1702 the next army locomotive, but they gave it a uh, kind of a southern railway inspired scheme with a large number on the tender and the uh, graphite smoke box. And here's a 1702 blasting upgrade out of, uh, out of Billsboro. This is in Abington, Virginia, uh, on, the, uh, on the Norfolk and Western. The Abington Depot on the left. The house on the right was actually uh, used for um, track maintainers. They, they would live there. And then I wound up accidentally chasing this train north. Um, I had to come north, and every time I went to the tracks, I found this train here. This is in Meadowview, Virginia, on the Shenandoah line. So I, I was proceeding north. And uh, this is, a, I think, Wade City, Virginia, southbound train. And continuing north, I got those UP engines again at Royal Retreat. This is a place where O. Winston Link did one of those more famous night shots. And then here's that interstate engine again on a different train now, heading north. Now, this is also at Royal Retreat. Then there's that UP train again, now a Vicker, uh, outside of Christiansburg, Virginia, and caught it underneath the old NW Coleman Tower there. Back to 2102, back at Port Clinton now. Um, made arrangements to do some light shots there. The hospital was nice enough to pose for us and we'll turn on the headlights and stuff, so it's kind of good. Next day, we're um, chasing the train up to Jim Thorpe. Here we are at Heckle. And coming out of the tunnel at Nesquahone. Three hour layover again, then we go to Jim Thorpe. So I head over to Lansford to the number nine coal mine museum. This is pretty cool. Uh, we spent about an hour down the coal mine. And here we are being pushed out of the coal mine. That's our engineer on the uh, battery powered locomotive pushing us out. At one time, this is all catenary, but really can't have catenary hanging uh, 
the foot above the passenger's head so we strung so and then 2102 coming back into uh right here we are at the uh, peacock locks uh, bridge I signed up for a photo workshop at the uh, what they call the trolley graveyard, the collection out in Windsor, Pennsylvania. Uh, a lot of PCCs out here: in Cleveland, Philadelphia, Boston, and Pittsburgh, and a handful of other other neat things too. Oh yeah, we had on an authorized tour. So uh, we had all day to spend here. And uh, they did some light stuff also with uh, the cars. A couple of people in RTA cars here. Uh, that night I was heading home, I, it was late, and I didn't really want to spend money on the motel, so I just pulled over in Crescent. In Crescent, was just crashing the car for a few hours. And this uh, train is pulled and stopped under the moon here. And I thought it's kind of a cool shot, so I took it. Uh, coming back to Cumberland again, post 11:30 in the morning. Got to get to Cumberland at 11:30 to chase 13:09. So here it is, uh, going up out of Cumberland at City Junction, still in the city limits here. Uh, I wanted this shot here because the 13:09 is an ex Chesapeake and Ohio locomotive. And I knew there was this ex CNO hopper car sitting there, so I got the two together. And then it's at the Parkersville Road um, overpass. Uh, a friend of mine was actually the engineer and spotted me on the line side earlier. So when he saw me on the bridge, he opened the cylinder pots for me. And coming into Frostburg. Uh, this is in Cincinnati. This is a Cincinnati Union Terminal. Magnificent Art Deco half dome. Really a cool place. And this is in Glendale, Ohio, outside of Cincinnati. Northbound CSX freight going past the top and pool in. Once again, with digital photography, um, with the cross box, the, the end, that's all it's all existing light. All I did was to see the one flash on the left hand side. I use that one flash just to light the side of the train. Uh, Cincinnati has a light rail system now. We are downtown in front of the music hall with one of the light rail trains. And there's no mistaking which city this is. It says Cincy in big letters. And back at Glendale again, this is the ex Baltimore and Ohio depot there. Once again, existing light for the depot, uh, just one flash to uh, light the side of the train. Uh, we're in Du Bois, Pennsylvania, Buffalo and Pittsburgh. And we'll be in Titusville, you know, in, uh, in Titusville, Pennsylvania. Cool little tourist operation using, using the South Bell. This is the um, Lakeshore Railroad Museum in uh, Northeast Pennsylvania. They have a Little Joe Electric on, uh, there uh, with the CSX main line just off to the right. Um, the reason Little Joe is there is because uh, this uh, museum here acts as the unofficial official museum for products of General Electric uh, in nearby Erie. And the Little Joe is built in Erie. And his father and son out washing trains there at the museum. I headed up to uh, the Wanda, New York. Instead of uh, MLW FAs. And uh, this uh, Erie Alco. This is the New York and Lake Erie Railroads, Tourist Railroad. They had a photo for train day. Which is kind of cool. We are coming out of the tunnel at Dayton, New York. 
and who can have orders. And we're in Middletown, Pennsylvania. Once again, the, this is the eastbound Pennsylvania, crossing over to Florida Creek. And back at Hunt Tower again uh, in Huntington, Pennsylvania. No snow on the ground now. And this is in Mar Marion, Ohio. I was out in Marion, Ohio for summer round, the big Midwest uh, slideshow. This is the Raritan Central Railroad. They're, they operate in the industrial park up in, um, up in Edison, New Jersey. And we have a, a, a an article uh -huh. in Raritan Central in Railfan Magazine. And the author wanted to set up a night photo session to get some photos for the article. And uh, this is part of that photo session. I need to run a picture for the Philly book of a Atlantic City Line train on the Philly side of the Delaware River. So I ventured up to North Philadelphia and got this shot here. This is the last photo I needed to finish off the, uh, the Philly commuter book. And then uh, the key locomotive, so we had their steam special earlier on the Western Maryland Scenic. Um, whenever they finish a locomotive, they uh, invite us up to their shop to do a night photo session with it. They just completed this little um, industrial engine for the Superstition Scenic Railroad out in Colorado. And uh, so we came up and did an official night photo with it before they sent it out to Colorado. They sent it to Colorado, which in the Superstition Scenic community found out that the locomotive was way too heavy for the track. And it came back to Pennsylvania again. The shop is located up in Ferris Hills, Pennsylvania. And here's one of their other industrial engines they got sitting around. X uh, Atlas Powder, I believe. SEPTA opened this extension uh, to Wawa. Here you see a train at, uh, at Lenny on the extension. And the other Amtrak uh, special engine this year was the King Tut locomotive. The 606 wraps for National Geographic's uh, King Tut uh, exhibit down in Washington, D.C. It was up in Maine to shoot some lighthouses. Uh, got some trains in while I was there. Here we see it down Easter. Uh, the service from Boston to Portland and Brunswick uh, coming through Old Orchard Beach, Maine with the roller coaster in the background. And the down Easter in Sacco, Maine. Uh, with uh, down Easter 20 years of service banners on the poles. And uh, NJ Transit has some special engines here. We see their armed force engine uh, at Delmar, New Jersey. And uh, here, here's the screaming eagle coming at us uh, at Point Pleasant Beach. Another NJ Transit train. Um, this is coming um, across the meadows at Lindhurst, New York City skyline in the background. Um, did night photo sessions, three nights in a row. The first one was in uh, Cape and Tuckahoe on Cape May Seashore Lines. Uh, Mike Reedy brought his, uh, his Chrysler New Yorker to pose in the shots. And we had the uh, the blue comet. And um, if I know you're going to do this shot, I have a Nelly Bly drumhead, one of the originals. If I know you're going to do this shot, I would have brought my Nelly Bly drumhead and put it on the Penzi train on the other track there. And uh, one of the Kitney Seashore Lines engines, XPRSL engines, as a matter of fact, uh, posing in front of Tucker Hotel. Uh, next day, I was on the way to North Jersey. I stopped at Black River and Western to shoot number 60, uh, going past the Hawk Town Station. And that night, we did a night photo session at the uh, United Railroad Historical Society uh, yard in Boone. NJ Transit brought over its uh, Jersey Central Heritage locomotive, which runs in regular commuter service most days. And we did an all pansy scene. 
and along the arch central seam. Then the third link photo session was over at the Westchester Railroad. They were doing their 25th anniversary. And we did a quick link photo session over there on, on Sunday night of their anniversary weekend. SMS again, they um, rolled out the 104. Um, this is an EMD switcher they had just um, purchased. They'd actually done, this actually was based at the Carnage Point generating station uh, until they stopped using coal there in May. And SMS had just refurbished it for the Carnage Point station, then they, they didn't need it anymore. So SMS bought the engine from Carnage Point because they knew it was a good engine, they just done the work. Uh, took off some of the Carnage Point lettering, added SMS lettering to it, and of course, the new engine needs to do a link photo session. I called SMS and said, Sure, come on over. So, headed down south again, and here we are in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, this is the commuter train, we go, we used to be the music city star. At Forbes. This is Memphis. Memphis has a, has a really cool streetcar system. Uh, the previous photo was an ex uh, Milan car. Um, this year is a Gamaco um, reproduction uh, Bernie car. One pass the Orphan in the theater. And Deal Street, of course, from Memphis. Uh, this is in Memphis. This is uh, CN Junction, one of the busiest spots in Memphis. The NSF train heading west, crossing over the ex Illinois Central. There's a diamond back there, about four cars back. Uh, no, actually, the diamond's underneath the first stack car there. Uh, ex Illinois Central, now Canadian National. Finally, for the first time since early 2020, I got west of the Mississippi River. This is in Spiro, Oklahoma. This is a Kansas City Southern train crossing over the Arkansas River. Arkansas River, yes. Um, Kansas City Southern is going to merge with Canadian Pacific sometime next year. And I wanted to get some final shots of Kansas City Southern. Here we see a train at uh, Rich Mountain, Arkansas. Uh, BNSF runs a lot of traffic on this line as well. Here we see uh, a BNSF pole train also at Rich Mountain. And we're in Ashdown, Arkansas. Three KCS trains. The train on the left is the Ashburn, uh, the Ashdown switcher. It works uh, the, the uh, paper mill here. In the middle is a train sitting still that's coming toward us waiting for a meet. And then the train on the right is a train that just met. That train's going north and away from us. What you see there is the rear. Uh, we are the distributed power unit in DPU. So three Kansas City Southern trains lined up in the road. And here's our train falling out of the side and heading past the Ashdown Yard office. Uh, CP oil train. We're still on Kansas City Southern, however. And then uh, we stopped at Gippsland. At the Louisiana and Northwest Railroad. Not much going on there, but the station was kind of cool. What's left of the station? Uh, we're in Vicksburg, Mississippi. This is the Mississippi River and the city southern train crossing over. And same train we chased him to the uh, Vicksburg Tunnel, which is only just around the corner, but trains can only do 10 miles an hour on the bridge, so they're easy to get ahead of. Same train is at the back of it, though, the rear uh, helper unit pushing away. Uh, still in Vicksburg. And back over to the bridge, we got this Norfolk Southern train coming across the Mississippi. But you can see on the far bank there how low the Mississippi River is. Uh, there just isn't that much bank visible, usually, none visible, usually. The water is up to the trees most of the time. This is in Jackson, Mississippi, a place called Switch Tender. Kansas City Southern and Canadian Nationals, ex Illinois Central Cross here. This is the city of New Orleans, behind one of the new uh, Amtrak diesels. And a CN train coming through Switch Tender. Uh, we're in um, Greenville, Mississippi. City of New Orleans again, heading south of New Orleans. 
and Canadian Nationals and the actual only Central Main Line, Canadian National Coal Train. But our destination for this day was actually in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Uh, Rock Island Rail uh, noticed that um, it was actually the Mississippi Delta Railroad, but the owner noticed that all of the Rock Island trademarks had expired. So he bought them. He, uh, he re registered all of the Rock Island trademarks and his painted with locomotives into the old uh, Rock Island bankruptcy blue paint scheme. It's really cool. Anyhow, we paid these guys 50 bucks a piece to stay late and pose the ancients for us. This is the um, Columbus and Greenville Railroad, now part of Genesee, Wyoming. We get a chase of this, really a cool little, little railroad, a lot of cool bridges and stuff. Uh, this is between Greenville and, uh, and Greenwood, Mississippi. Lots and lots of bridges. And then we, uh, not far from the Delta Bank here. This is Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, the U.S. Space Center is off to the left. Only place in the United States where a Saturn V rocket is on display in an upright position. You don't know how big a Saturn V actually is if you've been up against uh, up next to this. This is pretty impressive. Uh, this Saturn V here is actually a full size replica. Um, the building just below it actually houses an actual Saturn V on its side. There are, I think, three or four Saturn Vs on this, well, actual Saturn Vs on display. A uh, book for the Apollo program and never used. Uh, and all the real ones are all displayed uh, on the side. This is the Mercury and Chase Railroad. This is a subsidiary of the North Alabama Railroad Museum. Two Alcos provide their power. That's an ex-Lacawana unit there. And this is uh, Bridgeport, Alabama. Uh, CSX built a new bridge here about 20 years ago. Donated the old bridge to the city, which is now a walking trail. This is not far from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Speaking of Chattanooga, Tennessee, this is Chattanooga. This is Ten Bridge, uh, where Norfolk Southern's main line from Cincinnati comes down and crosses over the Tennessee River. Uh, in the background is Chickamauga Dam. Uh, this is uh, Marion, Virginia, back on the uh, ex Norfolk and Western in the rain. And Lorraine, Virginia. This is Power O. Winston Link, also doing one of those famous night photos. Um, headed out to Central PA to do a program for the Pottstown and Reading chapter. Uh, this is in Seeking Spring PA, westbound train on the ex Reading main line. And another westbound train at sunset. Back to the T1 again. Here we are in Molina, Pennsylvania. The Jim Thorpe trip to go going through Tamaqua, past the X Reading Depot. Uh, they had to try to train around at, uh, at uh, Mesquahoma Junction, uh, but the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railroad was out running at the same time. Here we see one of the Lehigh Gorge Scenic uh, trains coming across the uh, Lehigh River at Mesquahoma Junction, and the T1 being turned. And on the back end of the train to help with the turning was uh, a set of their uh, SD 50s in the uh, Reading and Northern's fast freight boats. Uh, they also had RDCs out that day, an RDC train from Pottsville to Jim Thorpe and back. Here we see the return trip at Barnesville. King Tut again going through Newark, Delaware. And a um, southbound train. It's getting pretty late in the fall, actually, but I was kind of pleased to find this fall color still there. Anybody know where this is? I, it, I cheat. I actually saw somebody else take this exact same photo and post it to the South Jersey uh, Facebook group. I had no idea this photo was even there. The next day, it was sunny on a fair duplicate of the shot myself. Yeah, it's cheating, but hey, it's a cool shot. <laughs> Great train run on schedule. 
it's not on the schedule, but it usually goes through having fights sometime between 11 30 and 2. So you just go there and camp out, and eventually it shows up. This was supposed to be King Tut, but uh, King Tut missed his train somehow. Uh, this is just, <clears> so the regular Amtrak engine going through uh, uh, Pigeon Point Park in Delaware, just above Wilmington. That's um, that's Bell, uh, Bell hmm? Bell yes, Bell, Bell in the background there. And this is uh, down at Marcus Hook. That's Hook Tower in the background here. First day of operations on the Woodstown Central. We see their first train crossing over Oldman Street between Woodstown and Sweetsboro. And train coming back south again, just north of Woodstown. I uh, had to go north and I stopped at Bell Mead. Got this. Uh, Southbound CSX train going past the old passenger and freight depots. X ready. And this is a bound book on the old Jersey Central. Actually, bridgeable. The bound book is just uh, off to the, to the rear. Went to Strasbourg to shoot the 611. Decided I would be different and do it all from the air with my drone. Here we are at Cherry Hill and crossing over the uh, Pumpkinville Turnpike. If you look carefully, you'll see somebody else's drone in the shot, um, just above the last, the last car on the train there. And the 475 is up that day as well. Harper's Ferry, westbound CSX train uh, on the old Baltimore, Ohio. Up in the Shenandoah Valley in Stanton, Virginia. They run on the X Southern out of there using this, uh, this Alco RS 11. And the Buckingham Branch Railroad runs on the old Chesapeake and Ohio out of Stanton. They run this one car tourist train, uh, fancy lunch service. That's like 140 bucks a ticket. Uh, but you get a three hour ride uh, and, and a good meal. And it's an impressive scene. Uh, this is in um, Goshen, Virginia. This is the Eastbound Cardinal. And also in Goshen, that's little Goshen, Chesapeake, and Ohio station there. Buckingham Branch, light engines heading back to Stanton. Uh, the reason I was down there was to chase the um, CSX Santa train, which is from on the French Road Railroad for the last 80 years to the take. It missed the last two years because of COVID. Uh, this is the ferry going from Kingsport, Tennessee, up to uh, Shelby, Kentucky, going past the Union Baptist Church in Canton. Uh, Next morning, this is the Santa train coming south. This is coming to Elkhorn City, Kentucky. Uh, I'll be doing a lot of this on my Wednesday night slides, uh, Wednesday night, a lot more in detail on the Santa train. But it's, it's a neat, neat operation. They throw literally tons of stuff off the back of the train. About a dozen stops along the way. 15 tons of gifts come off the back. Here you see Santa handing down an oversized stuffed bear to a, uh, a little girl. Um, if you had thrown this teddy bear off the back of the train, you probably would have killed somebody. So. And here's the Santa <coughs> train back at again, going past the Union Baptist Church. And crossing over Copper Creek Viaduct near Spears Ferry, Virginia. 12 car train, three F40s in the front, 15 tons of toys. Uh, on the way back home, stopped in Roanoke. Put the new Roanoke service, Amtrak service coming out of town, past the old uh, Norfolk and Western shops there. And here we have a westbound train coming into Roanoke. An eastbound train going past the new station, the new Amtrak station in Roanoke. And once again, I have to cut the geometry train out again, the research train. Got a, a random locomotive on the front, got the brick second out, and the, uh, the research car on the back.
And this is just this past uh, Saturday. This is uh, Woodstown Central again. This is coming into Woodstown. Um, the train is going back in town next Friday night coming up. And hopefully those leaves hang on the rest of this week because I got a night shop man here. You got it. Um, anyhow, after I shot the Woodstown Central, I headed north uh, to the Black River and Western. Um, I knew they had this, this 4.30 train coming out at sunset, and it really cleared out the area around Copper, uh, Copper Hill Trestle. Uh, so the silhouette shot was, was doable on the 4.30 train. Then I stuck around to some lights and caught the, um, this would actually be the deadhead move back to Ringo's after they're done running the Santa trains for the day. And that brings us up to right now. That's what I've done so far in 2022. Thank you very much.